<laughs> What's your dodged a bullet story? When I was a dumb young woman I lived in St. Thomas Virgin Islands. I worked in an area that could be very sketchy after dark. One night after work I got really drunk. I stumbled into a taxi to head home. So drunk I'm not even sure how I gave him my address. When we arrived I started digging in my pocket for cash to pay the taxi driver and he reached over and said no, no baby. I'm not a taxi. I just wanted to make sure you got home okay. Apparently I had just jumped into a random car. I will be forever grateful to this stranger and much more careful in my after work decisions. I was this person for somebody once, not for anyone in the Virgin Islands, but in the town I went to college. I was heading out to pick up a friend from work late on a Friday when this girl staggered into the street in front of me, waving her arms. In the middle of her confused and scared stammering I gathered that she lived somewhere a couple blocks over, but had no clue where she was anymore. I drove her home, staying until I saw her make it up the stairs and into her apartment. It hit me later that if she ran in front of the wrong person, she'd have a very different end to the night. I'm glad I was there but that thought still scares me. I left a store and it soon became obvious something was wrong with the car, I pulled into the Walmart parking lot I was by and yep, flat tire on the front left side. My rather pregnant wife, and three year old daughter get out. It was hot. Got out the crappy scissor jack that came with the car and I was about to get started when my brother-in-law stopped to see if we needed anything, so I said maybe let them sit in your car while I change the tire. I loosed the lug nuts, jack the car up, pull the lug nuts off, and tire is a little stuck. I lay down partially under the car to pull on the tire. The next thing I hear is my brother-in-law shouting look out, so I just roll away from the car and the very next thing I hear is crunching metal. The crappy jack had snapped in half, dropping the car all the way to the ground where my arm slash shoulder had been like one second earlier. No damage done to me, but I had to walk the adrenaline rush off for a few minutes after that. Fortunately we had AAA so they sent a guy to come fix it. The tow truck driver said he'd seen those jacks snap a bunch of times. So if the only jack you have for your car is the crappy screw type jack, please buy a better one. Please. I do not expect to come that close to getting injured and not have anything happen twice in one lifetime. Edit. A lot of you have really good comments on safety, etc. I upvoted all of them. Part of the point I should have maybe made more clear is that with a pregnant wife and daughter with me I was rushing to get things done. Rushing is always where I make mistakes and all that. In retrospect I should have handled it differently. But anyway I did dodge the bullet in this case. Had gallstones and the doctor gave me a choice between surgery to remove the gallbladder or antibiotics. I choose the surgery, which is very unlike me. When they started the surgery they found out the gallbladder had burst and the stones were in my body cavity. What was supposed to be a short procedure through the belly button turned into a 10 incision to remove the stones. I was supposed to leave the hospital that day, but it turned into a week. However, if I chose antibiotics and went home with a burst gallbladder, I probably would have died of sepsis. When I was 10, I had a friend who had a boys and girls club adult mentor. My friend invited me to come meet him, 
and I was immediately creeped out. The way the dude smiled at me still gives me nightmares. Two days later, a local news story identified him as a child molester, and he had been molesting my friend for two years at that point. I will always trust my gut when it says get the fuck out of here. Me and my girlfriend at the time were traveling from New Zealand to my family back home in Sweden. We both decided to spend a bit more money to fly back, to NZ, through Paris instead of Amsterdam, just because we wanted to see the Eiffel Tower. It cost us maybe an extra $50 and we got to see it on the landing and then take off, but never actually set foot in Paris proper because we were poor students. When we landed in Auckland, New Zealand, jet to shit, we turn on our phones and notice that we have about 50 missed calls from our travel agent, which was odd. When we call her, she sounds super relieved and out of breath. She tells us the flight she originally suggested to us, the one from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, was shot down over Ukraine. My brain couldn't process that information at the time, but once I woke up the next day it hit me like a ton of bricks. Fifty dollars made the difference between seeing the big steel thingy that has so many photos of it and bring sent to Sweden in body bags piece by piece. Sometimes the absurdity of my existence comes over me, and this story always gives me goosebumps. One hell of a story to tell over beers, though. Proof. Edit, clarification for some confused folks. We were traveling to Sweden for midsummer, sans sacrifices, so our itinerary was Auckland a lot of stops Sweden, and on the way back we decided to go see the Eiffel Tower, so Sweden Paris a lot of stops Auckland. This is so crazy. Hard to make sense of life after such absurd experiences. Also, that MH17 event is something that activates me and upsets me a lot. I mean, an airplane full of citizens and normal passengers gets bombed over a European country and that's it. No real consequences. Investigations seem on a dead end. It drives me mad. User Avatar Level 1 Tuba Hero 10 age. I was on my way to Taco Bell in the back of a friend's small truck. The cab was full so I was in the bed. We passed by my apartment on the way and I chose to have him drop me off, it was a bit chilly in the open air back there. By the time I got into my apartment I had a snapchat from the driver. It was a picture of his totaled truck. While he was stopped at an intersection, a drunk driver approached from the opposite direction going 100 plus. The driver clipped a bus causing an abrupt stop and his whole engine to rip out of his car, fly through the intersection and into my friend's truck where I had been riding, on seat belted moments before. None of my friends were injured. I think both the people in the other car died was helping two other people cut down a tree with a chainsaw after a storm that knocked out power, we had to get specific trees down before the electric company would come out to fix the lines. The tree snapped and gave way above the chainsaw cut and kissed my lip. If I was standing an inch further it would have been extremely painful. I was pulling brush for a very shady tree trimming company in high school during the summer. Well they were up in the tree cutting and gave me and another guy the ok to pull the brush out, a huge half cut limb gave way why I was under the tree, I just happened to look up and dove at the right time. If I hadn't had looked up at that exact time, the limb would have crushed me and killed me for sure. 
It was my last day working with those particular degenerates. I've got an almost literal dodged a bullet. I was cutting a tree with a chainsaw. The saw wasn't mine, it was old, and I don't know how well maintained it was. The chain broke and came whipping back at me. I didn't even react, it was too fast. I didn't feel any pain, I turned and saw the chain was hanging, half stuck into a tree behind me at head slash neck level. The tree was directly behind me, in a straight line from the chainsaw. Somehow the chain whipped off, curved around my head slash neck and buried itself in a tree three feet behind me. If it had gone straight I would be dead or disfigured. I didn't even try and take the chain with me, I just called it a day, walked off, and didn't pick up another chainsaw for about six or seven years. Wheo. Edit, I was also shot at while delivering pizza. I missed my turn in a rural area and used a gravel driveway to turn around, it was wooded on both sides so I went down farther than I should. I finally turned around and saw a guy with a bolt action rifle in a little field off to the side of the driveway. Saw him raise the rifle in my direction, saw slash heard him shoot. Never heard the bullet pass, and it didn't hit my car, so I think he was just trying to scare me. It worked. I peeled out, flinging gravel, and made it back to the road. Because of our positions, this asshole shot back towards the road, maybe 200 yards, and there were houses on the other side of the road. It was wooded, but that's not a shot I would have ever taken, beyond the obvious reasons. Mine is pretty similar with a chainsaw. I used to trim trees, once I had dropped a bunch of branches to the ground and some were pretty decent sized and the ground crew had not got to them. I would usually come down fire up the saw and cut them down to smaller more manageable size. On the day it happened for some reason I ran back to the truck and put on my chaps, first cut I made the saw kicked out and laid against the inside of my left thigh. If I had not put up the chaps that day I probably would have bled to death long before anything could have been done. Left me with a bruise from right at my knee to just about my balls. I was dating a girl for a while, and despite living and working on the opposite side of town, she'd always be near this one neighborhood coffee shop that I frequented so I'd randomly run into her there and ask what brought her to that neck of the woods. She's usually reply grabbing some coffee or I had a hunch you'd be here and wanted to say hi. One day she up and moves out of the state with zero warning, and tells me that we aren't dating anymore. I was confused, but it was casual so while it sucked I just thought oh she probably had some family emergency or something and didn't want to tell me. A few weeks later on her snapchat I see that she's just making absolute stacks in San Diego, and is always wearing the same uniform in these pictures. I was a bit confused but didn't think much of it. I started dating this other chick who frequented the aforementioned coffee shop, and after a month or two of dating, the first chick comes back and starts hanging out with her a bunch around the same neighborhood the coffee shop was in. A week later, both of them are moving to San Diego, and want me to come with them, live with them, and work where they work. Something just felt extremely fishy so I said no, and off they went. Eventually a picture got posted with both of them in it, in front of a very strange but very instantly familiar building. The HQ of the Church of Scientology. The reason the original chick was always in that neighborhood is because Kitty Corner from the coffee shop was the local chapter of the Church of Scientology. 
she got pretty ingrained in the church, and moved to San Diego to work for them, then came back to recruit gullible people to come back with her. And that's the story of how I lost two girlfriends to the Church of Scientology, and was none the wiser. Definitely glad I dodged that bullet. I stayed out of the house overnight while in high school. My dad was pissed off and told me that I better be home that night. I didn't listen and instead stayed at a friend's house with my girlfriend. At around 2 a.m. a kid from high school drove a Denali into my house. It ran directly into my room and destroyed my room, bed, and anything else around. He was estimated to be going around 60 miles per hour. My dad is blind and thought that I may have been in the room. He was searching for me frantically my mother said. I remember getting a ton of phone calls from home knowing that I was going to get into trouble for staying out against my parents wished. The next day when my GF dropped me off at home, I found a massive wood board and tarp covering my room. I would definitely not be here today if I had stayed home that night. Best case scenario I'd be a paraplegic. I guess sometimes it does pay to not listen to your parents. I actually have a similar story except I was there. My house has a T intersection directly in front of it, the single street is aimed at my room. I was sleeping and heard a big ass boom. Went outside to look and see a car that slammed into my house, it had just barely hit the corner of my house with the corner of the car which kept it from basically entering my room. My room was half underground and my bed is up against that wall in the same corner of the room. The car was basically like 10 inches from being on top of me. A young 16 year old girl was driving, father in the passenger seat. Talk to him and she is mentally handicapped and this was her very first time driving. She put the gas to the floor instead of the brake and barreled over the curb, through my bushes and into my house. Had she moved to the right maybe 10 to 20 inches that car could have been on top of me since it's half underground. Literally almost crushed by a car, while sleeping in my bed, in my house. My mom and I used to go to the mall, and walk after work because we both wanted to lose some weight. One fall night, we get there, and we've done about two laps around, it's a smaller mall, and on the third, we just see six or seven cop cars outside in the parking lot. My gut was telling me something was wrong, so we went out the back entrance. We learned on the news later that night, that someone had gone into the mall and stabbed someone who apparently owed them money, then went outside and stabbed two more people. Never found out if they were caught or not. I was as living in Utah and going to work at 5 in the morning. It was January and there was a fair amount of snow on the road. I was crawling down the icy hill that I lived on that has a traffic light at the bottom. I was about to go through the intersection since it was green for me when I noticed a snow plow that definitely wasn't going to stop at his red light. Luckily I was paying attention and was able to stop before the light. I definitely would have been t-boned if I had kept going. I'd planned on doing some grocery shopping one afternoon after running other errands in the morning. By the time I got done with my morning errands, the weather looked quite gloomy so I decided to leave the groceries for another day. Just as I got home I got frantic texts from a friend of mine asking if I'm okay and to respond immediately. Apparently around the time I decided last minute to forego shopping, Someone opened fire at that exact grocery store I planned on going to. If I remember correctly, fortunately nobody got hurt and the shooter got apprehended quite quickly. 
same thing happened to me and the boulder shooting. I live next door to the King Supers. I had just gotten back to Boulder after taking a few days to enjoy Silverthorn. While there, I got a photo of this fox that I had been trying to get for years. It was a super elaborate shoot that needed a fair bit of post-processing and I keep my editing computer at my studio. I ran home to get cleaned up and was going to go get some lunch at King Supers as I did just about every day but was way too excited to put this photo together so I just headed straight to the office instead. I get there and a colleague was like oh shit, there is a shooting going on at King Supers. 10 dead. That photo holds a lot of significance to me now. Edit. Here is the picture for those asking.